सत्यमेव जयते इन दिस टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ हिमालयास सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड नाउ दिस इज आवर करंट एरा यू ऑलरेडी नो ऑल दीज लैंडस्केप्स द कॉन्टिनेंट्स ऑफ अमेरिका एशिया यूरोप साउथ अमेरिका आफ्रीका ऑस्ट्रेलिया यू प्रेटी मच नो ऑल दीज एंड ऑल दी ओशन अटलांटिक ओशन पेसिफिक ओशन इंडियन ओशन एंड ऑल दो स्टफ नाउ लेट्स गो deep into the past let's say around 250 million years ago as you can see the structures of the continents has disappeared or changed now the wildlife or the fauna during that time was also quite different right so this particular superstructure is known as pangea this is like a puzzle all the continents that we see today were actually part of a superstructure called as pangea at the left you can see parts of america right and somewhere you can also see south america also and that's pretty much the whole of russia and asia so this huge continent was known as pangea it existed around 250 million years ago way deep into the past now there is a interesting thing also you have to know other than pangea right that's the name of the continent there was a super ocean and it was known as panthalassa panthalassa pangea was the name of the super continent and panthalassa was the name of the ocean the super ocean right now remember this our earth deep inside our earth there are many molten materials so these molten materials create tectonic activities they create problems on the top because of these problems the pressures and the gradients there is you know disturbances in the tectonic plates and these are the tectonic plates which eventually leads to the cracking of pangea as you can see around 210 million years ago the whole of pangea has split now it is in two parts the northern part is known as laurasia and the second and the southern part is known as gondwana now you can identify few of the continents here you have north america you have the whole of parts of europe and asia the whole of eurasia which is total called as laurasia then we can see parts of southern america africa and india right this part the southern part was known as gondwana so there were two structures the pangea split into two structures laurasia and gondwana now the sea the panthalassa sea has been replaced by another sea called as the tethys sea right as you can see there is the tethys sea now there are many different ways to pronounce that word tethys but i'm going with tethys right okay so laurasia and gondwana so what happens next as i mentioned there are molten activities in the deep inside of the earth which leads to tectonic activities like volcano and earthquakes which leads to the destruction of these tectonic plates around 200 or let's say um around 150 million years again there is a split actually it's not a very prominent process it's actually a very slow process that is still happening now also right the split keeps on happening and uh, as you can see many of the superstructures are uh, drifting apart right laurasia has broken up into north america greenland and eurasia whereas gondwana has broken into southern america africa and india so what's next again because of molten activities there is further split around 220 million years ago india completely dissects itself from africa as you can see at the bottom you can find india again there is a split and india pushes away from africa and as you can see there is australia also 
New Zealand also and deep down the Antarctica is also forming right now once again India is moving towards the north earlier India was located at the bottom the southern hemisphere now it has gone towards the north is going towards the north it's going into the Tethys Sea Africa is now getting developed into the current structure that we know right it's going India is going towards the north okay and Antarctica is expanding then we have Australia forming into the current shape then as you can see India has almost reached parts of Eurasia okay and it is closing the gap in the Tethys Sea okay and Africa is getting developed and as you can see uh, you have Saudi Arabia also okay Saudi Arabia has also formed now comes the part India has almost reached Eurasia and the Tethys Sea has been squeezed now we have to discuss two important facts let's work on that right so as you can see we have a lot of mountains here okay some mountains in North America some mountains in Southern America and some mountains in Asia right the mountains in Asia are quite familiar to you that is the Himalayas now we are going to discuss a very important concept this is known as the fold mountains what are the fold mountains now essentially there are five mountain types the first one is the volcanic the second one is the fold the third one is the block the fourth one is the residual and the fifth one is the dome so this is how the mountain types are categorized at this point we are only interested in the fold mountains so what are the fold mountains let's have a discussion so as you can see we have two tectonic plates now the whiter one is a more denser tectonic plate right so anytime some object let's say two objects collide the heavier denser one goes deep down and the lighter one goes up so the denser one is the one in white the left one the less denser one is on the right right now these two plates are going to collide okay and they have collided as you can see the denser one has subjugated under the lesser the less dense ones this subduction is because the difference in densities of the tectonic plates right now eventually with the time as you can see there is a formation of mountain okay the lighter one has gone up and pretty much it leads to the formation of mountain now there's a more technical process that we will discuss now but for the time being you just have to understand when the two plates collide the denser one goes down and the lighter one goes up right so essentially these are known as the fold mountains right because a fold is happening right so let's discuss three of the important fold mountains that is located across the world so these are the three fold mountains as you can see there are some mountains across North America there are some mountains in Southern America also and there are some mountains in between India and Eurasian plate so let's talk about the first one okay let's talk about the ones in Eurasia or let's say between India and Eurasia so this is known as the Himalayas we are going to talk about the development of Himalayas in coming series in coming parts okay then we have one more that is the Rockies mountain which is located across North America okay this is again a set of fold mountains then we have one more set that is called as the Andes so as you can see these are the Andes mountain so these are the fold mountains that are located across the world so now let's discuss a very important concept about the sedimentation in the Tethys Sea so as you can see this is a 3d diagram of Eurasia along with it we have the Tethys Sea 
right? Now, Eurasia being a supercontinent, it had a lot of rivers flowing across it. And many of the rivers actually used to reach the Thetis Sea. Now, we are familiar with this process, right? You have uh, the Ganga, the Yamuna, the Brahmaputra River flowing entirely into Bay of Bengal. We have Narmada River flowing into Arabian Sea. Similarly, there were many rivers from Eurasia that were flowing into the Tethys Sea. Now, when they were flowing into the Tethys Sea, a lot of sediments were being transferred from Eurasia to the Tethys Sea. As you can see, these are the sediments. And they are getting transferred to the Tethys Sea. Now, on the in the span of million years, more and more sediments get transferred to the Tethys Sea. This is a very important process because eventually these sediments lead to the formation of Himalayas. As you can see, there are a lot of sediments in the Tethys Sea because it was dumped by Eurasia. Now we have the Indian plate that is coming near to the Eurasia. As you can see, it is inching closer towards Eurasia. It is inching closer and closer. So as you can see, the Tethys Sea is getting compressed. Right? It's getting compressed. It's getting more compressed. It's getting more compressed. And almost it has reached parts of Eurasia. Right? So what's next? Now we will work on, the, on both of these concepts. The first concept that we have learned about the fold mountains. And the second concept about the sedimentation. We are going to work on both of them. So, as you can see, you have both of these plates. Indian plate and the Eurasian plate. In between these two plates, you have the Tethys Sea. And under the Tethys Sea, you have the sedimentation that has been bought from the Eurasian plate. Now, the Indian plate is inching closer to the Eurasian plate. The Tethys Sea is going up. Right? That's pretty much obvious. As you can see, the sediments are also going up. Okay? This process continues. And as you can see, the Tethys Sea has pretty much disappeared. The Indian plate, after the collision, it has gone deep inside. This is because the Indian plate is denser. And the Eurasian plate is now going to go upwards. Okay? Yeah. And the sediments, it has also been lifted up. Now, when the sediments were lifted up, okay, when the sediments were lifted up, there was an important process that was also happening. As you can see, in the Indian plate, there is a shallow basin that has been formed. Now, since the Indian plate has gone down, there is a shallow basin that has appeared. Okay, this shallow basin basically appeared because a lot of Indian plate has gone deep inside and that is why the shallow basin has appeared, right? So, again, Indian plate is still trying to go deep inside and this process is still continuing today, right? So, Indian plate is going inside and eventually, as you can see, because of the pressure, Himalayas are getting formed. Right? As you can see, the Himalayas are getting formed. More pressure, you know, as you can see, more pressure, the Himalayas are moving up. So, what's next? Now, as usual, Himalayas are formed. Okay? Now, we will discuss which type of Himalayas came first, later. But for the time being, we have to understand one more important thing that there was another structure that was formed after the formation of Himalayas. And those are known as the Indian Plains. So, the Himalayas are formed, right? And Himalayas, after uh, the melting of snow and all that stuff, they used to pour down water into that shallow basin. And eventually, Slowly and slowly, the silt got accumulated in the shallow basin. Okay? As you can see, the silt is going to get accumulated here. 
more accumulation leads to the formation of the northern indian plains right interesting along with northern indian plains the tibetan plateau is also formed so we have now the formation of three important superstructures first the himalayas second the northern indian plains and the third the tibetan plateau now the himalayas itself is going to split into three parts technically the way i said is wrong it didn't split it formed in three parts right now at this point we have described himalayas as one structural entity but it happens to be three different types of entities okay so as you can see three different types of entities or three different types of structures now entirely comprises of the himalayas so what's next as you can see this is once again the how the himalayas formed the indian plate has smashed itself into the eurasian plate leading to the formation of himalayas now let's learn how different parts of himalayas were formed right so as you can see you have three different parts of himalayas technically four right the first one is the trans himalayas the second one is great himalayas the third one is mid himalayas and the fourth one is outer himalayas now your question is which himalayas formed first the himalayas that were formed first is the trans himalayas and the greater himalayas and the great himalayas right the next himalayas that were formed after like almost million years later was the mid himalayas and finally the outer himalayas were formed so essentially first the trans himalayas were formed then the great himalayas then the mid himalayas and finally the outer himalayas so you may have a misconception that all the himalayas were formed in one set go no it came in stages first the trans and the great himalayas then the mid himalayas and later the outer himalayas now if you see the structures the height of the structures you will find the greater himalayas has the maximum height then you have the mid himalayas and the outer himalayas let me present this in a better way okay the greater himalayas has the highest height then the mid himalayas and the outer himalayas the question is why the greater himalayas has the higher height as the highest height compared to the mid himalayas or the outer himalayas the answer is very simple let's say you have a carpet okay you have a carpet on the floor now push that carpet to the wall of your room when the carpet hits the wall of your room you will see the very big wave okay the very big wave followed by smaller waves essentially this big wave is the greater himalaya then the second is the mid himalaya and the third is the outer himalaya simple 